Good day everyone. Our topic for today is all about the set of rational numbers. Rational numbers is any number that can be written in a form of A over B, where A and B are integers and where B the integers in the denominator is not equal to zero. The set of rational numbers is represented by a over b and b are integers. a and b are integers. So where b should not be equal to zero. The symbol not equals with is not equal to. It is also a number in the form of a over b also means that a divided by b where a is the numerator and b is the denominator also if a and b are both positive a over b b is called a positive fraction where a is less than b an improper fraction if a is greater than b and a whole number a whole number if B divides exactly A okay number one example explain why each is a rational number. Why 4 over 5 is a rational number? Because it is a quotient of two integers and the denominator is not a zero. So the fraction of 4 over 5 is in the form of a over b where a is equivalent to 4 and that is the numerator and b is equal to 5 where it is served as a denominator. For a fractional number negative 5 over 3. Yes, it is a fraction and it is a rational number because it is in the form of a over b where a is negative 5 and b is equal to positive 3 or we let b be equal to negative and a will be positive 5. Let us see. Okay. Why 8 is a rational number? A, because 8 is a bit rash, uh, It can be given or written in a form of rational form. Uh, it can be 8 over A or 16 over 2 or any number. Greater numbers will do for as long as the answer is equivalent to 8. Thus, Every integer is a rational number. Letter D. Why the reason? What do you think is the reason the decimal number 0.5 is a rational number? Another 0.75. Because it can be expressed as a quotient of two numbers and 0.75 can be transformed into fractional number 75 over 100 and 75 over 100 is equivalent to 3 4 where a is 3 and b is equal to 4 for letter d I oh know sorry e why it is a rational form because 0 0.3 bar is a new indication of a repeating decimals of 0 0.33333 ellipses. It is also rational because it can express a quotient of two integers and that is 1 over 3. 
So we have here the two properties that will help us to understand more about rational numbers. Property number one, that every rational number can be represented by either a terminating decimal or non-terminating decimal, repeating decimal. So always take note with that. Whenever you can see a decimal number which is a terminating decimal, it is rational. A non-terminating re but repeating decimal is also rational. Now, in example number two, you are required to write each as a decimal form. So, what is the corresponding decimal number value of 3 over 8? Negative 3 over 8 is also equal to negative 0 0.375. For letter B, 24 over 55 corresponds to a number of a, a kind of a repeating number, non terminating repeating decimal number of 0 0.436 36 bar. Another property every terminating or non terminating repeating decimals represents a rational number. For example, in letter A, 0 0.125 can also be expressed as negative 125 over 1000 or simply it is equal to negative 1 over 8. For letter B, 3.45 can also be rational in form by uh, moving the decimal two places to the right and you will obtain 345 by 100 for letter C 2.5 bar is equivalent to 25 to 5 bar over 10 and that is 5 over 2 for letter D and negative 0 0.23 bar is equal to 23 over 23 bar over 100 for letter E 3.25 bar it can be equal to 3.325 uh, bar over 100 and can be simplified to the simplest form of 13 over 4 Note that in the repeating decimal or terminating decimals, every recurring number is 9 and every number is not recurred is 0. Try it activity, so you will be tasked to perform it later. Okay, a number line can use can be used to order operation numbers order rational numbers rather so if the rational numbers lies on the right of the other of another on the number line then it is greater than the other rational number so if rational number lies on the left of the other another number on the number line then it is less than the other rational numbers now uh, first uh, the fourth example here requires you to arrange the following rational numbers depending on the order. Letter A requires you to arrange the numbers given in ascending order. When you say ascending order from least value to the greater value. So you have you can arrange this in the form of negative 3.5 followed by negative 2 is increasing followed by one half by next is three and one half then last is 5.1 while in letter B the given are required rational numbers are required to be arranged in descending order for descending order it will start from a greater value down to the least value so 
I think the, num the greater number here is 12.5 followed by 10 and 5 next is 3 and 3 fifth followed by negative 2.23 and the last is negative 3 and 4 tip next <coughs> you are required to answer another try it activity for <coughs> your own consumption ok next for all integers a and b and all positive integers c and d so if ever you are dealing with <coughs> A over C which is greater than B over D. If and only if product of the the, the butterfly multiplication or the cross multiplication of this the numerator of the other times the denominator of the other term. So it also follows that the product of A D is also less than B C. So number two, if A over C is less than B over D, if and only if, so we'll correct this, this, that is if and only if, the product of AD is less than BC. So for example number five, you are required to find which is greater between the two given fractional numbers. So for letter A, 3 fourths is greater than 7 over 12. For letter B, 1 and 3 eighths, and 3 fourths rather, is less than 5 thirds. Do the follow up exercises. Next. The density property of four rational numbers. So be between each pair of distinct rational numbers, there is another rational number. So in num it's the number six, we are required to find the number between the following pairs of number. Like for example, considering three, one half, comparing one half and one fourth. So, the number between these numbers is, by trial and error you can, you can see it, and obviously you can determine by turning it into decimal form, the fraction that would serve us in the middle of, or it is in between the two numbers. And for example, in one half and one four, it come out that 64 over 25 is between the two. It makes sense of the statement that one half is less than 64 over 25, which is also less than one fourth. For letter B, given our one over five and the other is two over five, so it, it's it's quite closer but still we can determine its middle term so by trial and error again we have 1 over 40 serve as the fractional number between 1 feet and 2 feet which makes sense with a statement 1 feet is less than 1 over 40 less than 2 over 5 for letter C Considering a number, decimal number, in decimal number I think it will be easy. You can do it without using any material for you to, so, to find out. But just looking at the number here, you, have, you are comparing 0 0.35 and 0 0.36. So obviously, we will add on a decimal place from ter uh, hundreds to thousands. So we will start with, since 0.25 is lesser than the, re, uh, the rest, so maybe we can add 
a thousand number point three five one. Surely that is within that number is quite greater than point thirty five. And of course less than point thirty six. Again perform the triad activity for you to practice. Now let's now uh, let's proceed this time to the operations with rational numbers. If A over B and C over D are rational numbers, then adding the same number A over, e over D B plus C over D is just equal to A over D of A D multiply multiplication. So A times B over the product of the denominators which is B times D so B D plus B C over B D would be that would be equal to the common denominator which is B D and the numerator or the sum of A D plus B C but uh, this operation was uh, its own limitation, particularly when you are dealing with three or more fractional numbers. So I think it's pretty much uh, applicable for us to use immediately the common denominator, finding the common denominator, and the best way is to, the safest way, way is to multiply the denominators and after that divide it by each denominator the product will be divided by each denominator multiply to the numerator of each term so I think that's the third step would uh, satisfy that idea same thing with subtraction by the way for multiplication of numbers fractional numbers always bear this in mind that you will multiply numerator by numerator denominator by denominator so multiplying a over b times c over d is equal to a c over b d in division there is a twist in this case if you are required to divide a number it's just the same that you are multiplying the inverse of the multiplier since we are talking about fraction here like for example a over b divided by c over d is equivalent to a over b multiplied by d over c so the inverse value of c over d is d over c and after that multiply numerator by numerator denominator by denominator which is equal to a d over b c Take note that not any of the denominator should be equal to zero. So the example provided, you are required to Simplify the given according to its operation. We are using the same process here. The only thing that always remember that when you are adding or subtracting fractional numbers 
always identify exactly its uh, common denominator for you to obtain the final answer. So it's clearly, we, I think we discussed this already, that if you're adding or subtracting uh, improper fractions, you should, the safest way is to convert into a mixed number rather, is to convert into um, an improper fraction, so that you'll be guided accordingly. Find the value of each, for example, uh, negative 5 over 8 plus 7 over 8. Find the LCD. LCD is two, uh, 8 rather divided by 8. 1 times 5 is 5. 8 divided by 8, 1 times 7 is 7. So negative 5 plus 7 is equal to 2. 2 over 8. And the simplest value is one fourth. It's the final answer. For letter B, adding uh, six and one, one fourth plus the negative of three and one third. By the way, this is, we're talking about mixed number here. Uh, turn it into improper fraction. So the corresponding value of six and one fourth is twenty-five over four. And that is to be subtracted by 10 over 3. This should be minus sign. The LCD here is 12 divided by 4 times 20. 3 times 25 is 75 minus 12 divided by 3 is 4 times 10 is equal to 40 so that the difference of 75 minus 40 is not 115 but 40 6 2 5 5 so it's 35 35 over 12. For letter C, you do the same process. And the final answer of letter C is 53 over 35, while in number 4, the answer is 0. By the way, in adding uh, decimal numbers, you just align the decimal points, then simplify it accordingly. Okay, in number six, you're required to answer the wording problems. An empty truck weighs one and I think we need to add another 
slide. So in order for us to clearly see the numbers, is for example number eight and seven or nine and nine. so I think we should also separate uh, this slide for this spare the uh, half of this page to uh, page to make the number greater I think it is clearly it is very clear now for us to understand more about the idea. So going back to the example, number eight, an empty truck weighs one and five over eight tons. The weight limit of the small bridge is three and three four tons. By how many tons is the truck under the limit when it carries a one and one half ton load? So we will put it this way. The original uh, limit, weight limit of the bridge is three and three four tons. And that is to be subtracted by the sum of the net weight of the truck which is five one and five eight by the load the sum of uh, their sum the net of uh, net weight plus the load which is one and one half ton so simplifying further we have we are turning it into a mixed numbers we have 15 over four tons is to be subtracted by 13 over eight tons plus three over two tons 
confirming the sum the two the sum is equivalent to 25 over 8 times so subtracting the value of Fifteen over four tons by twenty-five over eight tons. So the LCD is eight divided by four. We have two times fifteen is thirty tons, and eight divided by eight is one times twenty-five or negative twenty-five tons. So that the difference is equivalent to five over eight tons. Okay. For the next example, subtract from fifteen and one half the sum of two and one third and four and two feet. So it's very obvious in this statement that we will subtract. The sum of two and one third and four and two fifths by fifteen and one half. So turning it again to mixed number, from mix from mixed number into improper fractions. So we have seven over three plus the quantity of seven over three plus twenty two over five will be subtracted by thirty one over two. Okay, so finding the sum of the Quantified form, so it is equivalent to 105, 101 rather over 15. Minus 31 over 2. So the, this common denominator is 30 divided by 15 is 2 times 101 is equivalent to 202. That is to be subtracted by uh, 30 by 2 is 15 times 31. We have negative 4. Four six five. So that their difference is equivalent to negative two sixty three over thirty. Perform the right activity, and so with the assignment. Let's proceed to example number ten. Again, uh, we will see, we'll try to. Separate this first into two slides. Okay, for example number three you require to simplify each and uh, number ten rather so it's a multiplication of fractions again multiply numerator by denominator denominator by denominator 
But before that, if you're dealing with mixed number, turn it into improper fractions for you to be guided accordingly. Then simplify and turn the final, your final answer if possible to the simplest form. Okay. Example number 11 is all about, about its ordered problems. Julie spent three and one half hours during her assignment. Ken did his assignment for two and a half times, as many hours as Julie did. So how many hours did can spend doing his assignment. So in order to address the premise of the problem, we will utilize first the number of hours of Julie, which is three and one half hours. And that is to be multiplied by the Ken's hours consumed It is two and one half times as many. As Judy. Now how many hours did Ken spend during his assignment? So we will utilize in a way of multiplying uh, Judy's time by the as many times, uh, as many hour times of Kent. So that turning it into a proper fraction, we're multiplying 7 over 2 times 5 over 2. So the answer would be 35 over 4 hours. Perform the trite activity. And I think that would be all. Thank you, everyone. This is your teacher, Cedric A. Boris. Bye.